to get ready to celebrate this morning. I want you to be ready to celebrate as we first baptize a sweet little girl. Let's watch this video. Okay. Hi, I'm Callie Kirk. I'm 10 years old. My mom homeschools me, and I like to draw with a lot. I just like to draw with like the crayons and the markers. It was one night before bed, and me and mom were praying, or me and mom and dad were praying about accepting Jesus into my heart. So I took a couple of the Christian classes, and we, and all of us prayed a little bit more, and I accepted Jesus into my heart. There's nothing special about the water, but today I'm getting baptized to show the whole world that I'm ready to follow Jesus. How exciting it is for us to be able to celebrate life change through baptism. Isn't it? This is why we do church right here, to be able to celebrate people moving from death to life. And that can happen for you today, too. So you guys have heard Callie's confession of faith on this screen and how exciting for us as well to have Jeremy, her dad, baptize her. always knew that you were a gift to us and I've always been very thankful for the gift that you are to your mommy and daddy and our prayer has always been that someday you would find your way to God through family through friends through the church and one night a couple years ago you did just that and as you said in the video this is just water this is just a symbol but I am so thrilled that you are a sister in Christ with us so Callie Upon your video testimony today, um, do you believe that Jesus is the Lord and Savior in your life? Okay. Callie, my daughter, my beautiful daughter, it is my honor and my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Good morning. My name is Ron Kimball. My, li- my wife is Melinda Kimball. We've been going here at Hermitage Hill about five years. I was raised in Methodist church. And if it was Sunday morning, we was in church unless somebody was definitely sick. I converted to a Baptist church when I was in my adolescence, 11, 12 years old. I was baptized at age 13 out of fear our preacher was a hellfire brimstone teacher, preacher. And when you walked the aisle, you basically walked it out of fear. But that's been a long time ago. I've never really questioned my salvation, but make no mistake about it, I am a sinner. Every time, everything I've ever done in my life, I've done it at an early age. I got married when I was 16, had three boys by the time I was 19, and had a little girl a few years later. In 1968, I went to work for Corporate America when I was 17 years old. And over the next 15 years, we moved 13 times. We lived in numerous states, numerous cities. But the bad part about that 15 years from 68 to 83, we got out of church. When we finally got back to Nashville in 1984, we got a divorce. And I was given custody of the children. The kids at that point in time was age, was ages 9 through 16. But from 98 on, I basically have been in church for the last 20 years. Uh, now, 2006, Melinda and I was married, and we was looking for a church home. We at first, was going to Two Rivers and some other churches. And about five years ago, we found Hermitage Hills Baptist Church. We've made Hermitage Hills Baptist Church our church home. We we served in numerous ways, but in April of this year, we started the Bible study, and we immersed ourselves in the Word five nights a week, and still are, and the reason, and that's the reason we're here today. Uh, The adversary started attacking me eight to ten weeks ago. He was trying to kill my joy. He was trying to steal my peace. He was trying to destroy my relationship with Christ 
making me feel unworthy. And I must admit to a degree he was successful. But I know any time that you're under attack by the adversary that you go to the word, which is the truth, which is the fact. But for some reason, no matter how much I looked, studied the Bible, the attacks would not go away. So I decided to ask for a face-to-face -face meeting with Poli. And quite frankly, we had three different meetings, about an hour each time, so he spent about three hours with me. And I consider Poli my spiritual leader. And during our conversations, Poli made the suggestion that probably the best thing I could do is just stick a stake in it. And what that means is this. Today I'm declaring that Jesus Christ is my Savior and Lord. And I give all praise to God. Today, September 30th, 2018, and it's done. I've asked Christ to fill my heart and my mind. And on the authority of Jesus Christ, Satan must depart. There's not room for Satan and Christ in my heart at the same time. Today I'm doing it out of love. I'm being baptized out of love. Love of God, love of Christ, love of the church, love of the people. But more important than anything else, today I surrender. I give up. I surrender myself to Christ Jesus. I ask that He fills my heart and my soul with His mighty power. In Christ's name, amen. I love listening to those testimonies because they teach us spiritual truths about uh, what people are experiencing within their hearts. There's a, a message that Ron proclaimed there that I think is so important for us to remember this morning. God doesn't want any of us to come out of fear. He wants us to come out of love because he radically loves us. And I think that that very well could be a message for you today. And Ron, I want to tell you something out of the conversations that we have. I admire you so much because you love God so much within your heart and within your life. You want to make sure everything inside of you is right and completely His. That's beautiful. That's a message as well for every single one of us in this room that we would begin to take our salvation in the most serious and sincere way because it truly is a gift from God to us. So together, we all in this room get to celebrate the life change that has happened in you through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You've got family behind you. You've got life group members behind you. We're so thankful that you're an active part of our church family. So upon your confession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. church today? 
I think every time that we can come and celebrate the God that created us, that's something that we should do. This time is important and so valuable. Um, when you came in this morning, you received a uh, connection guide. And uh, it, it, everybody pull that out and wave that at me. Everybody. If you didn't receive one, you need to get one. Uh, because there is so many valuable things for you to have. A uh, host, could you please come forward? If, if you didn't get one, could you slip up your hand? We'd like to be able to make sure that you have one for several reasons. The first reason, when you open up that connection guide, you'll be able to see our mission and our vision. And, and who we are as a church is there so that you could check that out. We would encourage you to read that. Secondly, there is a list of ministries that you see um, in activities that are happening throughout the month. You could take that sheet home and put it up on your refrigerator. We'd love for you to be able to know uh, about all the ministries that we have that are functioning, that they're going. And the purpose of all those things is for people to experience life change through Jesus Christ. So read that. Be aware of what's going on. Lastly, if you open it up all the way, there is a communication card that you'll receive right there. Um, I would encourage all of you in the room right now, rip off that communication card. Go ahead. Rip it off right now. That communication card is exactly what it says that it is. It's an opportunity for you guys as the church body to communicate to us as the staff. Well, thank you. I guess I need one too. That works out great. All right. Um, so grab that, rip that card off. And the first thing that we would requ request for you guys to do, in just a few moments, we're going to be taking our offering. Write your name down there in a prayer need that you have. One of the things that we love to do as a church is to be able to pray for you guys. As you guys communicate to us with this card, we're able to know your prayer needs. And every Tuesday uh, at 9 o'clock, we gather and we pray over those needs. So please do that. If you're a guest with us this morning, there's several things that we would ask for you to do. Um, use this uh, communication card as well to drop in the offering. If you've got questions about our church and you're saying, man, I'm looking for answers, write down those questions in the way that we could best contact you and we would love to get back with you. Um, and also, if you're a guest, write, if you turn around and look, Right to the back on the left, there's a looking to connect banner. Our pastor is going to be there. He's got a free gift for you. If you like coffee, you'll like this gift. It's not coffee, but it's a, something to put the coffee in. And it's a pretty incredible mug. You're going to love that. You're more so going to love being able to connect with him. And uh, be sure to also send that card in. Um, we'll be sending you a thank you card for coming. And uh, also there will be a free gift in there for you too. So be sure to do that. Um, so a lot of information. Now I need everybody, stand up. Stand up. We're going to continue in worship this morning. Our offering will be in just a little bit. But we did definitely need you to uh, be sure to drop that connection card in there so that we can have uh, all the information from you guys back to us. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this morning. And God, I thank you for baptisms. Because God, I know that they are a reminder of what all of this is about. And that is about people experiencing life change through a personal relationship with you. God, I love the fact that as we have relationship with you, we're able to get out of the bondage of sin within our lives. Those things that have a hold of us that we never think that we would ever be forgiven of or free of, through the power that raised Jesus from the dead coming into our hearts and lives, we have power and authority to, to move past those things. As we accept you as our personal Savior, that power is there. And God, we celebrate that today. We've celebrated that through baptisms. And God, today, collectively in this room, we celebrate you through these songs. God, you are worthy of our praise. You've created us. You've formed us. You've loved us. You desire a relationship with us. You are our rescuer. God, I thank you for that. God, there's messages through these services, through every aspect, every song that we sing, uh, the, the message of communion, the message of these baptisms. And God, that you're coming and you're running to us to save us. We see that from Genesis to Revelation. And God, I pray today in this room 
that we would celebrate you with everything that we have today. God, you are worthy of our praise. And we praise you this morning collectively as a body of believers. We lift you up this morning in this place, God, and we say thank you, Jesus, for who you are and how much you love us and how much you care for us, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Colossians chapter 1. Verse 13 says, he has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and he has transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Amen. Let's sing this, this incredible, incredible modern hymn together this morning.
is the light that overwhelms the darkness. There is a kingdom that forever reigns. There is freedom from the chains that bind us. Jesus, Jesus, who There's truly no other name on earth or in heaven by which anyone can enter into a redemptive relationship with God. There's only one name that's always, only been existed. There's only one name that's walked this earth. There's only one name that makes the adversary flee. And his name is Jesus. And if this thing today is about anything than Jesus, let's just go home. It's got to be all about him. It's got to be all pointing to him. It's, it's got to be all sung to him. It's got to be all given to him. It's got to be all about him. If it's about anything else, let's just close the doors and do something else. So worship is us to come into his presence with singing, to come into his presence with praise, to come into his presence with thanksgiving, to come into presence with our lives because we have this 
love for him that's secondary to nothing else. He is Christ. We've been on a journey for 30 days called 30 Days of Generosity. And I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 6 in just a moment because I want to, I want to kind of draw the net as far as this part of the Open Heart series, as far as we were trying to encourage you to take steps in your spiritual journey. You see, Matthew 6 is an incredible chapter. Where every Bible, every chapter in the Bible is an incredible chapter, right? But and this is an incredible place for today that I want to draw your attention to as we worship the Lord. Jesus is, is, is gone into a pattern of teaching. And he was teaching them about many things about stepping in relationship to him and what would that cause you to see differently and respond differently and behave differently and live differently and different choices. And he, he was calling them to so many places. In chapter 6, he says, let me just kind of walk you through a few places. He starts out and says, you know, when you walk with me, you're going to see the needs of the needy around you. And you're not going to just sit back. You're going to engage that. You're going to step into that because that's who I am. That's who I call you to be is people who meet the needs of others around you. So he talks to them about that in the beginning of first, the first verse in chapter 6, and then he moves into a series on prayer. You've probably heard of, or you maybe have read yourself, what's called the Lord's Prayer. They, they said, Lord, teach us to pray. You've taught us how we need to help people who are struggling. Now, teach us how to pray. And so Jesus does this, what we call the Lord's Prayer. And it wasn't there for you to recite uh, mindlessly, but it's there to teach you some, some boundaries and some perimeters and some principles about prayer. And so he leads them through this prayer, pray like this. And so he's teaching them how to pray. And then the next few verses, he, he teaches them about fasting. So he talks about helping people who are struggling, and this is how you commune and communicate and pray in relationship to God. And, and then he says, Here, here's this principle called fasting. And the Bible says oh, certain things, there's certain things in your spiritual life that you'll never experience if you don't do it in an in a attitude, in, a, in the presence of fasting and prayer. See, there's some things you'll never step into if you don't step into fasting and what that means. So he's teaching them what fasting is all about. He calls them people, not only who help people in struggle, not only people who pray, but people who fast. And then he goes to the next place. Are you ready for this? He then teaches them how to be generous. And I find this amazing. I mean, he could have gone a lot of places, right? Well, let me talk to you about marriage for a while. Or let me talk to you about relationships or friendships. Or let me talk to you about... He didn't. He went from helping people in need to how do you pray, to how do you fast, to how you're to be generous. You see, all of these are biblical, spiritual steps and truths for followers of Jesus to connect deeply to. And so this whole 30 days of generosity is not... It's not trying to do something or twist your arm in some way, but it's trying to communicate to you there is a, there is a spiritual faith test about your heart. About your heart. When you have your physical heart checked out, you do what's sometimes called a stress test. They put you on this thing and they run you and they increase your heart rate. And they got all these things wired to you and they're checking your breathing out and your heart rate and all that stuff. It's to test the heart. Today is a test of the heart for many of us in the room or watching by live stream when you consider this next step of what Jesus is teaching. So he says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 and through 21. Look at what the Bible says. I think the verses come up on the screen for you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. Where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Verse 20. But, so don't do this, but lay up for yourself what? Treasures where? In heaven. Where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. Verse 21, don't miss this, underline it, circle it, let your heart dive deep into it. Verse 21, for where your what? Treasure is there your what? Heart will be also. It's great to meet the needs of 
people. It's great to learn how to pray. It's great to understand the principles and steps of fasting. But let me tell you something. The heart test, the heart test comes when you and I discover where the treasures are being laid. Am I laying the treasures here? Where moth and rust can destroy it? Y'all know the feeling of that, right? You go out and you get that brand new car, you know, it's got that new car smell. And, you, and, and years later, you try to keep that up by spraying new car smell into your car. But that car is slowly what? Dying. It's rusting away. It's not going to last. And we put so much of our resources in places like that. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So look at me. Ready? Man, in the next few moments, it's going to be really, really significant for many of you in the room. You've been praying. You've been thinking. You've been arguing with yourself maybe a little bit. This is a moment of worship. Now look at me. Look at me. This is an act of worship. This this is not a church tradition. This is not some Baptist thing. This is a response. My response, your response, our response of followers of Jesus. That I understand you and I, God's called us to be stewards over everything he's blessed us with. And we are to be good stewards with that. And when you come, not just today, but every time you come, you want to say, Lord, you own it all. I want to be a good steward, and so I want to, I want to worship you, not just singing. I, want, I just want to worship you just in listening and participating in prayer and celebrating baptism moment, Lord's Supper. I, I, want to, I want to worship you by saying, God, you own it all. So I hold in my hand for Julie and myself. This is our weekly gift that we have. We bring every week to the house. To the storehouse, the scripture says. And then I also have my, I love my church over and beyond what we normally do. In a moment with you, we're going to worship and I'm going to place that in the plate. And let me tell you something what's so important about this. And I hope you'll really experience this. It's, it's when, that, when these men serve you, they're serving you a moment of surrendered and worship. So when you take that which you brought and you place it, it's saying, Jesus, you own it all. I don't own anything. I'm giving you back what you've, you've spoken to me about. I'm, I'm worshiping you. I'm worshiping you, not just words, but in actions. I am worshiping you, and I'm surrendering this in this moment. Take it. Bless it. Multiply it. Why? Because I want to lay up treasures heaven. Are you ready? Are you ready to worship? Not just sit there. Not just be blessed by all the incredible music and stories. But are you ready to engage faith with that which God's blessed you with? Let's pray. God, we hold in our hand these tithes, these offerings, these gifts. Lord, because we are wanting to surrender in this attitude and spirit of worship to be generous, to follow your example of generosity, to know that and realize you own it all and here is a portion. And God, would you take it and multiply it and use it locally and globally? to meet the needs of those struggling. God, I want to dive deeper in all aspects of my spiritual journey, and this is one of them. Bless those who for the first time, (laughs) for the first time, they're stepping in. God, speak. Let them see, reveal to them your goodness, your power, your grace, in your name. We surrender and we worship. 
Amen. Let's do it, guys. Oh yeah. 
is not dead, but you are very, very much alive. And you are living and breathing here in this place this morning. God, whether we are here present or whether we're watching online this morning, may we know and may we understand that scripture is true, that death has been defeated, and that through the person of Jesus Christ, there is a way back to you. God, here this morning, we love you and we thank you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seen. you've connected to that in some, some way uh, today. Either maybe it's brought some curiosity up for you as someone who's stepped in seeking maybe something about Jesus and about what is God all about today. Maybe a friend invited you, maybe you're online um, checking it out or Maybe you just drove by. You know, the number one reason people come to Hermitage Hills, the number one reason is they drove by and saw the church. And you ask, what brought you? Well, I just drove by and saw the church. And maybe you're one of those many who have done that through the years. We invite you to take your Bible and turn to 1 Corinthians and chapter 11. We're going to get there in a few moments. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Everybody has faith. Not just those who go to church, but everybody has faith in something. And you exhibit that faith in so many different ways every day. For example, uh, today or last night, whenever it was that you walked over in your home or wherever you were and you, you saw a light switch on the wall and you walked over there and you reached out and you flipped that switch up. You exhibited faith. You believed that if you were to turn that switch up, that there would be a connection that would take place. And as a result of that connection, a light would come on. Maybe you were like trying to get dressed and you walked into your closet and you need to turn the light on. Because trying to find that outfit or pick out your, your clothes of the day, it's always better to see what you're doing. Some of us, it may not come across that way, but it's better to see what you're picking out and what you're choosing. So you turn a light on, and there's a connection that happens that turns electricity flow to that particular uh, light source, and it comes on, and it helps you get dressed. Maybe you walk to the kitchen sink or to the bathroom sink this morning to wash your face or wash your hands or get a drink of water or whatever. And you reached over and you turned the cold water knob on. And when you turn that on, you're exhibiting faith because you believe when you turn that on, what was going to come out? Was that a hard question? <laughs> when you turn the cold water on, what's going to come out? Cold water. water, yeah. So you reach over and you turn the hot water on, what's going to come out? Well, not first. It's a little cool, then it turns warmer, and then it turns hot. It's anything like the houses I've lived in. But you expect at some point when you turn the hot water on, hot water's going to come out. You are showing faith by reaching out and turning that on. Expecting something to connect and work. So you, you have faith. Everybody in here watching my live stream, you are exhibiting faith in something, someone's and so today, you know, as a church, it's all about faith, a, a light that can come on for you. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He said that he is the water of life. You drink of me, you'll never thirst again. He is that water. He is that light and faith in him makes that connection between you and a God who loves you. How does God love you? Matthew 5, 48 says that God loves you with an everlasting love. 
You, you can't outrun it. You can't outdo it. You, you can't outresource it. It's a well that never runs dry. It's a love that never, ever ends. doesn't matter who you are, where you're from. God deeply loves you just like you are now. And he loves you so much, he doesn't want to leave you where you are. He wants to take you on a journey through this experience called life, which is incredible that he has for you, and then eternal life that he gives to those who come to faith in him. You see, eternal life is very, very real. There's two destinations the Bible talks about. There's a place that Jesus said, I went to prepare a place for you in John 14. In my Father's house, there's many mansions. I'm going to prepare a place for you. This place the Bible calls is heaven. It's a real place and real people go there. There's also another place the Bible talks about. In fact, Jesus talked about this place more than he talked about heaven. I'm going to say that again because maybe the first time you've ever heard that. But the Bible, very clearly, when you record all the times Jesus talked about heaven and all the times Jesus talked about hell, he talked more about hell than he did about heaven. Interesting. Is it not? Why? Because he doesn't want you to end up there. Both places, I can't describe to you, both places we can read, we can study, and maybe you might get just a little glimpse of what that's like. But I'm telling you, both heaven and hell, I can't put into words that are successfully going to describe at 100% those places. But let me try to define for you this hell, place hell. It's the place where God's love is eradicated. It's a place where God's love is absolutely absent. There's no portion of God's presence and there's no portion of God's love in this place. It is completely removed. Now, you and I think this world has a lot of pain, a lot of struggle, a lot of hurt. And I'm not trying to minimize many of us in the room who are dealing with some of those things. But I'm telling you, it's, it's, it, 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 it pales it pales in any kind of, of what you or I would experience or anyone experience when you remove. See, we got God's presence here. We got God's love here. We got God's spirit moving to and fro uh, like a new wind calling people to himself. Where you live, where you work, where you sleep, where you go, where you play, where you are in this room, in this place. Well, no matter where you are, you can't get outside of where God is. You can't go too high. He's not there. You can't go too too low, he's not there. There's not a place you can't go here and now that his love, to some degree, is not present. Think about that. Let me try to describe this to you. And I'm not trying to be crude. But even in the Holocaust, in that brutal time where lives were taken by the tens of thousands, God was there. You ever thought about that? How horrible that is. But you remove God completely. Now you got hell. And I'm telling you, I cannot successfully describe that to you. I know it's not a popular place to even discuss, even in church today. People say, don't say that, don't do that. Well, Jesus talked about it more than he talked about heaven. I think it's time maybe you and I kind of face up to that. Why? Because he loves you so much. His desire is so deep. He wishes none to perish and go to hell. But he wishes all to have repentance and eternal life. Are you hearing me? He wishes none. It is not his desire. It is not anything with his nature and his love. That anyone would go to hell. His desire and his love and his passion is that all would come to repentance and eternal life. Heaven. See, we all have faith. What is faith? Well, if you just look at the word faith, F, forgiveness. Everybody needs forgiveness. Amen? Amen. Ain't not a person born doesn't need forgiveness. Bible says all of sin comes short of the glory of God. Everybody needs forgiveness. A, available. It's available to everybody. There's not a person who's been born that that is held back from. God says it's available to you. I, impossible. It's impossible for you to have a right relationship with God on your own. You can't do it. 
For by grace you've been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is a what? Gift of God. Lest any man should boast. It's impossible for you to attain that, to acquire that, to have that, to know that on your own knowledge and your own experiences. T is turn. There's a point where you understand you got a problem. I got a problem. It's a sin problem. It separates us from God and we need to be forgiven. And it's available to us. But I've got to step into a heart of repentance and turn to Jesus Christ and give him everything to surrender. Man, giving him a few dollars or nothing. He's saying, I want your whole life. I want your whole life. I don't take a part of your life. I don't take a portion of your life. There's only one way relationship to the Father through me. And that is when you give it all to me. Everything. It's the only way. How do you know that? Because Jesus said, I'm either Lord of all or I'm not Lord, what church? At all. I'm either Lord of all or I'm not Lord at all. You think writing a check of 10% is hard. What does it mean when you give everything to Jesus? Everything. Your marriage, your job. Your kids, your future, your today, your tomorrow, your yesterday, everything to him. F-A-I-T-H, heaven. Here and now, what do you mean by that? You think this is heaven? No, I don't. I talked to a guy who thought that. It was a very interesting conversation. But I said, oh, heaven's a whole lot better than this place. I can guarantee you that. But heaven here and now means the peace of heaven, the joy of heaven, the love of heaven, the strength of heaven, the comfort of heaven. It's all available here and now through Jesus and the hereafter. As from the body is to be present with the Lord. The step from this life, which is a vapor, here and gone, to eternity. Some of you were here when we had that illustration. I took that rope uh, in the other worship center. Do you remember that? I took a rope and we, we spun it all the way around the worship center. I mean, hundreds and into thousands of feet. In the very end, I held on my hand. It was about this much rope that I had taped in red. I said, this is the now. The rest of it is the hereafter. Heaven here and now and hereafter. See, we're getting ready to read the scripture and take the Lord's Supper together. Why do we do that? Because we want to proclaim the Lord. When you take that bread... You're proclaiming the Lord. When you drink that cup, you're proclaiming the Lord. You're remembering him. You're honoring him. But to do that, you've got to know him. To take this, you've got to have a relationship with him. As we'll see in a moment. Now look at me. Ready? Every child, every person, online or in the room, have you come to the place where Jesus is Lord of everything. I surrendered all to him. Great word by Ron today. Amen. I, man, I'm giving him everything because he loves me so much. Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I want to put my hands on a God that cares so much for me? He's going to take care of every need. There's nothing that's going to come to me that doesn't first slip through his hands. Why wouldn't I do that? Maybe this would be your moment. Maybe this would be your hour. Maybe this would be your time to step from death to life. Scripture says, oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, death, where is your victory? Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our what? Lord Jesus Christ. Faith. You have faith in some things, but do you have faith in the most important person, the most important thing? Let's pray. What is the gospel? Jesus was born. Jesus lived the perfect life. Jesus surrendered to the will of the Father. Jesus went to the cross and paid the price for sin, past, present, future. Jesus was buried in a tomb. Jesus three days later rose again that we sung about. And Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father praying for you right now in words and groanings that we can eat, cannot even begin to repeat. But he's saying, I love you. Come, 
all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to me. You can come to him in a prayer right now. Come to Jesus. In your heart to the Lord, you can say words like this, Oh, Jesus, you're the Lord, you're the master, you're the king. I surrender my heart and all I am to you. I repent of my sin. I trust you, Jesus, and you alone to save me, forgive me, and allow me to experience your presence in my life every day, here, now, and the here after in heaven. God, take my life. Make me a new creation in Jesus today. Thank you. If you prayed that prayer, the scripture says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, freed. John 8, 36 says, When the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. In Christ, that's who you are today. Father, bless us as we come, as we gather, as we proclaim, as we remember in Jesus' name. Amen. 1 Corinthians 11. If you have your scripture to read along, take a Bible from the chair. It's on page 976. Let me read, and then our servant leaders are going to come and serve you. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And we had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this, what church, in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, how, church? In remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So this is a serious moment of proclamation. Christ, you gave your body. Christ, you gave your blood to allow the church to be born, a new covenant to take place, to remove the old covenant and place us into a brand new relationship, Jew and Greek alike, where sins can be forgiven and people can be made whole. But verse 27 says this, whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, underline unworthy manner, will be guilty concerning the body and the blood of the Lord. Let a person examine, circle the word examine, himself. Then and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For if anyone eats or drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks what? I need you to say that word. Eats and drinks what? Eats and drinks what? You don't want to say it, do you? It's a hard word, isn't it? Eat and drink what? Judgment on himself. So what, what does this unworthy mean? Well, a few things. Number one, here, if you're in the room and going to be serving a moment, if you've never stepped into faith in Jesus Christ and surrendered to his lordship and authority in your life. If you've never done that, again, listen, we're so glad you're here. And I pray you'll keep coming. I pray we'll have conversations. I'm so excited you're in the room. This is not to push you out in any way, shape, or form. But we want to tell you, an unworthy man would say, you do not know Jesus as Savior, but you take the Lord's Supper. That's an unworthy act. So what do you do? Well, as we pass the elements, you just pass it on by. It's okay. It's all right. No judgment here, right, church? There's no judgment here. Place of love and compassion in this place. But you wouldn't want to take the bread and the cup if you've never come to Jesus. Now, some of you say, well, I don't go to this church. I'm a believer in Jesus. It's okay. Absolutely. We believe in Jesus here, not in some title or label or name. 
We believe in Jesus. If you trusted Christ as Savior, you're more than welcome to take it with us today. The Bible says examine. When you examine yourself, when you hold that bread and that cup, if you examine yourself, if something comes up and God brings attention to your mind, and you're going, I'm not willing at this point to face that, deal with that, confess that, or repent of that. I'm not going to do that. Then, then you wouldn't want to take the Lord's Supper. You just pass it on by. We understand that. Sometimes in our journeys, we come to times it's a struggle and it's a fight and we're working it through and you're not there yet. I get that. It's okay. I understand that. But you wouldn't want to take the bread and the cup today. That would be an unworthy act, unworthy manner. Some of you have children. They haven't come to faith. Man, pull them close. Talk to them. What are you doing? Why are you doing it? What does this mean? Why is it significant? It's a great teaching moment. It's okay to talk to them. It's all right. We, we, we don't frown on that. We, in fact, we encourage that. Teach them. But you wouldn't want them to participate if they haven't come to faith in Jesus yet. You with me? Why is that? Because that's what the Bible teaches. So men, come forward. Let's pray. So we enter a time of examination right here, right now. And these men, our deacons, our servant leaders are going to bring that. You're going to pass it to one another. If you want to say something to the next person, it would be great. Like, hey, this is the blood and body of Jesus. Take it and bring glory to his name. You want to encourage them? Man, I'm praying for you as we take the Lord's Supper. You're supposed to say, man, God loves you. Here's the Lord's Supper. If you want to say something, that would be great amongst the body. But you want to enter a time of real examination. You just take that spiritual x-ray that God shows, reveals. You just confess it, repent, and proclaim. Oh, God, in this moment, we let go of us. Would we all agree together in this place? As your scripture says, we want to decrease so that you will increase. Decrease so that you can increase. As we serve one another, love us as we love you, and we worship you in Jesus' name. Let's serve one another.
elements that Scripture says Jesus gave to the disciples. Isn't it amazing, thousands of years later, disciples are still holding these same two elements in their hands in this room today. He took the bread, he broke it, he said, this is my body. The body that went through one of the most incredible, torturous times a person could ever experience. That's why in the garden that night, Jesus spoke honestly to the Father and said, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, but your will be done. He surrendered to the will of the Father. We surrender to the will of the Father. As you take and eat, remember him, honor him. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this bread we hold in our hand, symbolic of Jesus, your body. Thank you, Jesus. May we never underestimate that day, those lashes, that crown, the spear in your side, the sin you took on the cross. We bless your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Take, eat in remembrance of him. Scripture says on that same night, he reached down, he took a cup. And I know we read this, and it may not have the same impact, prayerfully it can be, though, when Jesus said, this is the blood of a new covenant. Now, I, it's not in a text, but I just got to think emotionally, the guys in the room went, A new covenant. A new covenant that says, you'll never have to slain a lamb ever again. You'll never have to go to the temple for the Day of Atonement ever again. There's a time in history that God speaks and Christ is taken as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And it's a new covenant for Jew and Gentile and Greek alike. This, my beloved, is a new blood covenant. It proclaims Jesus. Without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness of sin. Jesus, we proclaim you today and the victory that's found in you today as we give thanks for you today. Let's pray. Father, we do not take for granted this new covenant this incredible relationship we can have with you every day in every place that we walk on this planet. We do no longer have to have to go to a holy of holies through a chief priest. We have a chief priest named Jesus, and the veil has been ripped from top to bottom. And we have access to you, God, through Jesus, every place, every moment, every day, every need, every heart for every life. This new covenant of the blood of Jesus, we praise you today. We proclaim you today. We give thanks to you today. In Jesus' name, take, drink, in remembrance of him. Stand together, please. They sang. They sang and they left. We're going to sing and leave today. Our staff is going to be here at the front with some of our laymen. And as we sing, if you prayed and said yes to Jesus, would you come and tell those folks? Y'all come right now so they can see who you are. Michael's over here and Debbie's over here. Andy, are you coming, buddy? Here comes Andy. The other beautiful bald-headed man in our church. Andy's going to be down here and others will be here. Some of our deacons will be here. Man, if you said yes to Jesus, would you come? Nothing would excite Andy or these folks more than if you come up going, I said yes to Jesus. Man, they'd love to pray for you and help you about next steps for you today. They'd love to do that. 
Maybe you just need somebody to pray with you. No more important time to pray for healing and pray for God's will to be done to right here, right now. As we sing, you're open to come. Afterwards, when we dismiss, these folks are going to remain. They want to talk to you before Holy you leave. King sing and worship. Come in response. Proclaim Him, Lord. Angels all adore, I join with them and bow before Jesus, only Jesus, who can command the highest praise, who has the name above all names, you stand alone. walking down front this morning. What I'd ask you to do is pick up the card that's in the seat back in front of you. It says, I said yes. And as you fill that out, drop it off in the box uh, as you leave today. It's a great opportunity for you to start a conversation with us and likewise us to begin one with you. Again, just check the box that is appropriate to you, whether it's I received Christ as my Savior today or I want to talk with someone about baptism, just like we witnessed this morning. Again, thank you for being here this morning. We have a newcomer's lunch for those of you who have begun to attend our church over the past several months, maybe uh, even as far back as four or five months. We'd love to have you, if you've never attended, to join us up in the loft. God bless. We'll see you guys next week.